So we are now coming up on the end of quarter two, and I thought it would be fun if I gave you an update on my thoughts of using my A5 business planner. And all I can really say is I was scared at first, I was a little hesitant, but I am. it's safe to say that I am actually enjoying, no, take that back, I actually love using this planner. So to give you a little backstory, I've always used a seven by nine, eight and a half by 11 book bound or spiral. And I was always intrigued by and thought that all of the photos and pictures I've seen on Instagram, the YouTube videos I've watched, I've always been intrigued and kind of fell in love, had a crush on the A5 planner, we'll say that. So, but at the same time, I was kind of hesitant because you have to buy the agenda, you have to buy the inserts, you have to buy the dividers, and it can pretty much, it can, it can really add up. But what I also thought about it was, is that, is it really that much more expensive than having a regular traditional spiral or bookbound planner when they're running $65, $75 when, unless depending on the type of agenda, your cover you're buying, it kind of adds up to the same price almost, maybe a little less, and at times it can get out of hand. So here are a few things of what I do like about it. Number one, I love the simplicity of it. Everything is all in one place. I have my goal section in one. I have my day-to-day, -day, the weekly section in another. And I'm actually, I have an inbox in one, in it. And I'm also going to be doing a content calendar also in here as well. Right now it's completely in a different um, planner that I have. But I'm thinking about actually putting it in here and trying it out for the last six months of the year. That's what I think I now like about it and what I've probably always liked about it is having everything in one place. I kind of enjoyed having being multiple, using multiple planners, but then that gets cumbersome. It gets tiresome because you have to pull out this planner here. You have to pull out this planner here. When why don't I create and customize a planner that I actually like and that suits my needs and I can kind of have fun with it in a way. But back to the simplicity of it, it's not, I think for me, what I've learned with this is that as long as I knew what I needed it for and the sections that I needed, it made it a little bit easier for me. That way, I, I'm the type of person that uses their planner. I'm a creature of habit, so I tend to use the same layouts year after year so there's nothing different but with the simplicity of this it makes it so much easier for me one to have everything for me in one place it allows me to if i'm in the mood to change it up i can but i haven't even changed it up yet um, it's the same from when i put everything in it back in january and did the walkthrough of it back in january but it is just simple for me it is peaceful for me now have i found planner peace maybe my version of planner peace because everybody's version of planner peace is different but i think i've found my planner piece and i think i've found a good sweet spot for it so i definitely love the simplicity of it one of the things i did i was actually concerned about was i was going to get and have A5 overload. So what is A5 overload, you ask? That is seeing all of the things, dividers, um, what else, dashboards, stickers, agenda covers, insert, and the, we can, inserts, we can sit here and talk about that all day. But I didn't. I think because I'm a creature, because I planned everything out first, and I made sure I said to myself, okay, I need a goal section. I'll do the inbox section because it seems like everybody had an inbox in there. I will have the base of my planner, which is my weekly section, so I can plan out week to week. And that was about it at the beginning. But then as I started to look into it a little more, I was like, you know, 
maybe I need to add content planner in there as well. So that's going to be very easy for me and I will walk through everything once I get everything set up and let me know if you want to see me actually set it up this go round or do a final walkthrough or kind of do both. So just let me know in the comments below. So planning it out a little bit for me helped because then I'm not out here buying all of the things. What it also allowed me to do was to see exactly what I needed and what I didn't need in my planner. So there are some sections in here, well not sections, but there are some inserts that will actually come out because I still can't really figure out how to use them or what to use them for, but I'm sure that I'll be able to find something down along the line. The great thing is they're undated, so that'll be perfect for me. So not having and going into A5 overload because listen, all the beautiful pictures, all the agendas, and I do have one or two agendas that I wanna buy, um, but I'm not quick to pull the trigger on them right now because I want to get accustomed to just using and figuring out how I want to use and set up my planner, and then I'll be able to take it on to the next steps in the rest of the way. Another issue I had was the size. I'm used to, seven by nines, eight and a half by 11s. To me, the more room, the better. This was one of the things I was kind of a little hesitant about, but the size really isn't that bad. I'm like, you know what? I can do this. It's enough room for me. That way I'm able to write down everything that I need to write down. I guess that's why I can also add the different inserts if I need to, but it's plenty of room. I thought maybe I still think I have this huge handwriting that I don't have. My handwriting fits perfectly inside of it. I even just the size, the compact of the size of it, it tucks away into my file folder where I hold all of my planners at. And it was, it's just, it was like, whew, okay. And actually that was probably the biggest issue that I had with it was the size but actually this size i would like to say is the perfect size for me and i don't think i would ever as much as i would like to try a half letter i think a half letter might be a little too small for me but this actually gives me enough room and all that i need and not only size wise as far as me writing but it also is enough room, as you can see, it's a little chunky, as you can see from here, and it'll probably get chunkier in the next six months. But this is actually, it's very roomy. I think these are 30 millimeter rings and all of the inserts and everything that I have, I'll put all of that down in the description box below in all the websites that I actually purchased everything from. So I can actually say that now the size, it's plenty of room both to write in and plenty of room to put all of the inserts and everything that I would need in there. I'll, it's good to put in there because right now I have an entire year, the 2020, I think I have all of 20, the year of all of 2023 in here from January all the way up to December in here. Um, but as I change it out for the second half of the year, I'll have six months of, um, from July to December and July to December for the other half because I'm buying new inserts and I'll figure all that out and share that with you once I put everything together. So all in all, I can definitely say the A5 planner is, it's great. I'm enjoying it and I even use stickers in it now. And I'm not a huge sticker person, but with the stickers that I have, it's like, oh, I can use these stickers because I think the stickers I originally bought when I first started getting into planning and realizing that people use stickers, that they were pretty much for the A5 size. So right now, when I tell you I use stickers and if I don't wanna use stickers, I'm fine with that too. What I'm finding is, is that this is a very peaceful planner for me. I can get all of my thoughts out. It's functional for me, which I am a more of a functional planner. So it's very functional for me. And I'm learning that I can spruce it up when I would want to with dashboards and things like that, which I'll probably do for the second half. I think I actually have a little list of everything that I wanna buy. 
And that's one of the other things too. So if you're looking to take the plunge and go into an A5 planner, I highly recommend it. What I'm going to do is, is I'm going to actually leave this video right here, or is it right here? It'll be somewhere on the screen. And it is the tips that I use to prepare myself and to figure out exactly what it is that I needed to use for my A5 planner. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to watch this video next and have an amazing rest of your day. And I will see you guys next week in my next video. Bye guys.